dominatrix by trade. I'm also a performance artist. I do use two names, but both names fall into one persona, and that persona is not as divided as some might think. Um, I bring my performance nature sometimes into my ability to be a dominatrix and sometimes my understanding of power exchange and play into aspects of myself as a performance artist. They actually launched as paths in my life almost simultaneously in Boston where I was performing at a fetish night at an alternative club called Man Ray, um, which then moved to Machine. And um, I started uh, doing choreography and art direction for uh, monthly shows or performances on the stage. And they were abstract, um, but very erotic and focused on um, power exchange and BDSM and fetishism. So I got to play with both roles almost at the same time, uh, working with up to four or five actors on the stage to display what it is to let go or mimic or experience kink. Tension, eroticism, sensuality, the ability to create a, a new realm instantaneously within yourself and within others with the f with very few elements and with the correct elements um, you can go very far away from reality and into whichever realm you desire so almost like astral projection or um, a good film you, you can take someone wherever you want, just with a couple words. It's passion. Um, I don't think I have great ability, at least not in the traditional sense of um, you know, the school of theater or domination. Um, I have great knowledge and I've done a lot of research and I have great experience at this point, but I've never been traditionally trained in any of those sensibilities um, to do exclusively theater or domination. I've had um, amazing mentors here and there. I've been suggested many books that have explained a lot of things to me and i um, been very lucky to have people in my life who are open enough to share their experiences so I can greater understand how it is to construct those realities and bring people to the places I want them to go. But um, none of it's acting. It's all quite real. I would have to say it started very early. I had a lot of strange erotic fantasies as a child. Um, and not having explored that physically, psychologically, they're always present and quite prevalent. Um, my parents are very liberal and incredibly supportive, so I'd have to say I the correct environment to feel comfortable exploring these things, paired with my initial um, past life experience. I'm not sure where my eroticism came from. I was just I feel like I was born with um, these notions of uh, sensuality and. Um, more of like a creative understanding of tension in sex and eroticism. So I think those two paired together fostered uh, this like very ideal path for me to follow, which I'm still uncovering. Um, I'm starting to work with different mediums now, and my parents have been fully supportive from day one. As far as security, my neighbors can't know because I take clients at my house. I have, for a majority of the time I've played, I do occasional out calls and I have spent about three months working at a dungeon. And 
it's not safe and it would be a breach of um, mental security for my clients to be exposed in a way that my neighbors knew who was coming in what to what end. Um, my all of my friends know. Uh, I'm not private about it socially and certainly not on social media. So I've been hired for music videos by friends. Um, similar references generally pass on the knowledge to um, various industries and end up getting booked for a lot of things like music videos, lectures, um, consulting on fetish events, and um, I began consulting and then fell into the role of a director and creative director of um, a video production company that I then became my own um, production company. But word gets around, whether it's through my own advertising or references, and certainly those neighbors that we have online know, but my physical neighbors can never know. And it's, uh, I go to great lengths to make sure of that. It's hard to define what is crazy. Um, if you mean uncomfortable, um, I'm made uncomfortable every day by people's lack of understanding or lack of desire to understand and their fear, but that's very much personal to them and I'm not sure how uncomfortable anyone is around me. Um, as far as my perception of my own discomfort, uh, when people choose to disagree with something um, I'm asking of them after they've already ascribed to a role of having no power makes me uncomfortable because I don't understand where they're coming from. Um, when someone asks me to take their control away from them and then imposes control on me, not necessarily through healthy boundaries, but just through um, an adamant desire to challenge me, I, I'm made uncomfortable by that challenge.